Greetings, everyone, and welcome to the Spirit Side Journey Towards the Light. I'm your host, Paul James Caden, and this week on the show, we are going to be discussing what the Arantia book has in common with spiritualism. Now, I know there's some people in the Arantia community who would say that the Arantia book has absolutely uh, nothing in common with spiritualism. They would say spiritualism is just uh, kind of a throwback to the ghost cults of old, um, the cults of ancestor worship. Some may even shake their fists and say, this is sophistry. But uh, I assure you, it's not all sophistry and it's not all throwbacks to uh, the ancestor worship cults or the ghost cults of old. I always say that uh, spiritualism is one of the most misunderstood philosophies and religions uh, in the world, especially among mainstream religionists. When you read things on websites, in books, or you hear uh, a lot of pastors uh, give sermons on witchcraft and the occult, and they mention spiritualism, uh, 98.9% of what they say uh, is untrue, it's misunderstood, or perhaps uh, maybe they're even exaggerating for shock value, I don't know, but uh, there's an awful lot of uh, misinformation out there. The one thing I will say uh, very quickly before we jump into this uh, subject is that spiritualism isn't about sitting around, uh, talking to the dead, worshiping ancestors, or being witchy, or acting like every day is Halloween, you know, uh, calling up spirits. This is uh, not the truth whatsoever. Spiritualism considers itself first a philosophy, and then a science. And much like the paranormal investigators that we have now in uh, the world, and some of them uh, are very popular on TV shows with ghost hunters and all this type of thing, spiritualists actually, uh, in communicating with the spirit world, have tried to make a science out of this, to try to gain um, actual evidence that there is life after death. And so a tremendous amount of work, particularly in the uh, mid-latter 1800s into the, you know, maybe uh, early uh, mid-1900s, a lot of uh, research went into spiritualism, carried out by spiritualist foundations, where they really investigated things under controlled circumstances, uh, under the most scrutinized uh, scientific conditions to try to prove, you know, if these mediums were really uh, communicating with the spirits of the deceased, if a lot of this uh, paranormal activity and manifestation that was taking place uh, was actually real or something that was a put on. And uh, a lot of these people that were in the spiritualist communities and societies of past they in the past they were uh, very educated people they were scientists lawyers doctors teachers professors uh you name it and so we had some very brilliant minds involved in this religion in this philosophy in this science and uh, some of the things that they proved some of the things that they uh, brought to light were just fascinating. And uh, to this day, there's really no uh, debunking, you know, what these people did and what they discovered. So spiritualism is not, uh, you know, a Halloween witchcraft occult religion. It is first a philosophy, second a science, and then some would say thirdly, a religion because uh, spiritualists do believe in God. Uh, there are Christian spiritualists such as myself, and, uh, you know, it gets into the religious aspect from there. So getting into this idea, and excuse me as I uh, 
adjust the camera. I have it kind of precariously set uh, this week if you're watching by video. So there may be a, a little movement or me uh, uh, adjusting it as we go. But let's get into our subject. Uh, what does the Arantia book have in common with spiritualism? Well, first and foremost, uh, we have to understand how the Arantia book came to be. And a lot of people think, or if you read a lot of information online, uh, you'll see a lot of that misinformation again, as in spiritualism. They'll say the Arantia book was written by a man who went into a trance and spirits were speaking through him. And he eventually started to write all these things on paper. And, uh, you know, hence the Arantia book was born through uh, basically trance mediumship. Uh, but this is not true. There was an unnamed individual who, in the beginning, went into a trance. It was uh, one of the neighbors of William Sadler and his wife. And uh, the neighbor came to their door one night and said that her husband uh, was experiencing a very strange phenomenon. He would fall asleep. She wouldn't be able to wake him up. And sometimes he would say uh, strange things while he was in this deep, deep sleep that she was unable to arouse him from. And she asked Dr. Sadler if he would come down and, or yeah, if he would come down and take a look at her husband. And uh, Dr. Sadler found this interesting. He took the man on as a patient. He thought maybe this uh, person was uh, trying to play some kind of trick on his wife, uh, especially when these voices, you know, started to speak through the man saying that they were celestial visitors, celestial beings from uh, what we would call heaven, angels, speaking through this man. But this man never touched pencil to paper or pen to paper, and he never wrote anything that is contained in the Arantia book. Uh, the Arantia papers, as they're known, uh, are said to have actually uh, begin to materialize. Uh, no writer, no author, and uh, no one knew who wrote them. Dr. William Sadler uh, actually conducted a handwriting analysis of himself, his wife, uh, the neighbors, you know, the man who was going into the trance, his wife, anybody that was involved with the beginning phenomenon and study of the Arantia papers, and the handwriting analysis didn't match anyone. And they began to spy on this man who was uh, the unnamed sleeping subject. And they would follow him through town. They would, you know, follow him, him home, trying to catch him in the act of playing like this great hoax. But never did they find him doing anything or even having the time that he could write these papers that were so complex and, uh, you know, sometimes uh, in quite a volume. So the papers were said to just materialize. And another interesting thing about the Arantia papers, is that when Dr. Sadler and the, uh, the early committee would edit the papers, the way that the celestial beings wanted them to be edited and put in their order, the original papers would just disappear. They would vanish from the earth. And Dr. Sadler would lock the papers in a safe and they would disappear. He even took them to a bank and put them in uh, a safety lockbox, and from there, they disappeared. And uh, so this is a very uh, interesting phenomenon, but I want to put a, a bookmark right there and uh, go over uh, what the commonalities here are with spiritualism. First and foremost, as I mentioned before, the man going into trance and uh, having a celestial being or personality speaking through him, this would be known as trance channeling or trance mediumship in spiritualism. So we see right in the 
uh, at the inception of the Arantia Papers, uh, there was something very spiritualist going on. And I think a lot of Arantia book readers, they know this, but yet they overlook the fact. You know, they don't realize that this whole phenomenon began with a spirit being, a celestial being, speaking to a man who was in trance. And basically when someone is in trance, uh, their, uh, their consciousness is kind of set aside and the spirit is said to, you know, take control of the vocal cords, the mind, the consciousness and speak through the individual. And so this, uh, you know, this is something that we can't deny. If we are readers of the Arantia book, we know that this phenomenon of trans channeling or trans mediumship did take place. And this was kind of the, uh, the preface uh, of the Arantia papers being born. Now, as far as the papers just appearing uh, with no one writing them, and it's interesting to note that William Sadler uh, Jr. in later years said, wouldn't it have been interesting to, you know, watch a pen or a pencil moving, writing on the paper uh, without seeing a hand moving it? And uh, this is probably uh, what you would have saw, maybe, uh, because, you know, this idea of the papers just appearing, uh, a lot of people in the Arantia community um, they don't, they don't seem to either know this or it's something that they don't want to face that there was this, uh, you know, you could call it paranormal phenomenon happening that actually produced the papers. And of course the skeptic would say, well, that's just ridiculous. How could papers just appear? You know, how could words just appear on a piece of paper? Well, again, spiritualism holds the answer. And this is what is called uh, independent writing. And independent writing has been a phenomenon in the past that, uh, as I was talking about in the beginning of this show, uh, where, you know, uh, experiments and studies were done in very uh, controlled environments and one of the phenomenon that would happen in these controlled environments was um, independent writing, words appearing on paper uh, without even a pen or a pencil or a human author. So this is something that has happened in spiritualism. It has been witnessed in spiritualism under uh, controlled uh, in, a, in a controlled environment as people would study this phenomenon. So it's not uh, out of the question that the Arantia papers came into being through what spiritualism calls independent writing. The beings themselves either moving the pen or causing the words to materialize on the paper. I'm more of the belief that the words probably just materialized rather than uh, the spirit or the celestial picking up a pen and, uh, you know, jotting down the papers. Uh, I think it was probably more of just a manifestation of the, the words directly to the page. And this is how sometimes the, uh, the papers would appear so quickly. Um, and, you know, in such a volume that it would have been, you know, uh, pretty impossible for a human being to write. So right from the inception of the Urantia papers and their origin, we have trans channeling, trans mediumship, if you will, and independent writing. And I think uh, me personally, as a Urantia book reader, I think a lot of people in the Urantia, the Urantia community need to come to terms with this. You know, there's always been the notion in religion, whether it's mainstream Christianity, whether it's some of the metaphysical movements like Christian science, uh, the Arantia movement. There's always these people who want to disqualify and um, 
kind of push aside the paranormal, the supernatural. They want to explain it away. They want to say that it can't happen. They want to call it all, you know, foolishness, demonic, occult, witchcraft, uh, sophistry, whatever the case may be. Um, but we see, again, right in the beginning, there is definitely some phenomenon taking place that caused these papers that, to come into being. And even in the Urantia movement itself, there is what is called the teaching mission. And these are individuals who uh, connect with spirit. They don't connect with spirits of deceased loved ones, but they connect with angels, uh, different celestial beings known as midwayers and, you know, other beings that are out there or what is called the thought adjuster, which is the fragment of God that dwells within each and every one of us. Uh, they say they connect with, you know, Holy Spirit, uh, the spirit of truth, which is the spirit of Jesus that is, you know, with us and in us here on the earth. So no matter what movement you're looking at, uh, there's always those people who break out and say, no, you know what, it is possible. And you know what, I see in the sacred text that we read that it is possible that there are verses that, that allude to this being something that can be done and is not uh, discouraged by God. And we'll get into some of the reasons why, um, you know, maybe the Arantia book and, and, and writings like the Bible kind of caution on, you know, mediumship uh, a little bit later. But suffice to say, uh, the connection with spirit always seems to break through one way or another, because I think there are some people uh, who just know in their hearts it's our divine birthright to be able to connect with these spirits. You know, there are family, there are friends, there are guides. Uh, they come from what is ultimately home, our real home, not this material home. And there's people like myself that have had experiences since I was a little kid before I even understood what, what they were. And uh, I can feel those presences around me. Uh, I'm not like connecting with spirit every day or holding seances or anything like that. But I certainly know spirit is there. And I think uh, and I know uh, that it is, you know, my spiritual right and birthright to be able to uh, connect with my unseen family. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more uh, again about that uh, toward the end of the show. But getting back to what spiritualism and the Arantia book have in common, it's interesting to note that in the Arantia book, there is uh, the idea put forth of the evolving soul that when we die we go to what is called the mansion worlds and there is uh, different mansion worlds that we progress to as we uh, mature and learn on the other side uh, and this is taken from the words of Jesus where he said in my father's house there are many mansions Behold, I go and prepare a place for you. And uh, the Arantia book talks about what are the mansion worlds. When we first die, uh, we are resurrected uh, on mansion world number one. And there is a place of learning and also a place of unlearning. Because as much as we have to learn uh, new things about God, new things about the universe, new things about the reality of, of things as we thought we knew it, uh, we have to unlearn a lot of garbage that we probably will learn from religion and society and this particular world that we live in. So it's a place of learning and unlearning. And then once we reach a certain uh, stage of development, we go to man mansion world two, then three, then four, and so on and so forth. Now, it's also interesting to note that spiritualism teaches this. They don't call them the mansion worlds, but they call them the levels of heaven. And when we leave this material body, we will go to 
the first level of heaven, then to the second, to the third, and the same thing. We're there to learn, and we're there to unlearn. And we progress our way up into the presence of God. And from there, uh, we, as we become pure spirits, we are assigned our tasks in the divine plan. And we will go out into the universe or universes. And there are various tasks and works that we could be assigned to. Uh, in a sense, we will be like the angels. And we will be... Uh, you know, whatever our assignment and mission might be uh, in the plan of God for us at that particular time. So both the Arantia book and spiritualism teach this. Levels of heaven, making our way to the presence of God, and then our, our, our assignment into the universes. Now, a lot of people might say, well, uh, spiritualists believe in reincarnation. Well, that might be true, but it's also untrue. In the past, there were a lot of uh, spiritualists and mediums who renounced reincarnation and said that this is not what happens. And particularly, uh, you know, Christian spiritualists, which most in the beginning were, uh, would say that, you know, reincarnation is not, not taught in the Bible, that we either go to, uh, you know, the, the first level of heaven or the only difference in spiritualism is they do teach lower realms or what we would call hell realms, but they are not places of burning and physical torture. There are places where we face our own sins and shortcomings and stubbornness and greed and violence or whatever it might be over and over and over again until we realize uh, we have to purge ourselves of these things and then we progress onward to the presence of God. And I do agree with that in spiritualism, that there would be lower realms that uh, a really evil person would go to uh, until they learn not to be evil. If you talk to a lot of folks in the Arantia community, they'll say, well, uh, you know, someone like Hitler or, you know, the, 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 the guys that, that, that flew the planes into the World Trade Center on 9-11, uh, Jeffrey Dahmer, uh, John Wayne Gacy, you know, it, all these people will eventually, uh, like the rest of us, be resurrected on Mansion World number one, where we'll learn and unlearn. Um, I'm not a believer in that because I've always believed and felt in my heart and soul, not all rewards are the same. Uh, so I don't see... John Wayne Gacy and Hitler and Jeffrey Dahmer uh, or Charles Manson walking around on the first or second level of heaven with everybody else, uh, just as if, you know, what they did on earth uh, didn't really matter. You know, it was just big mistake, big misunderstanding. Now let's just take care of everything. You know, I, I definitely think um, the souls will be assigned their place and I also think that's uh, biblical, you know, that uh, there are such levels and uh, people who are, are very evil or very dark or very violent or whatever the case may be, uh, these lower realms is where they will go until they learn uh, not to be evil. And it's possible in spiritualism that someone could absolutely refuse to change, absolutely refuse to purge those things from their mind and their soul. And they could uh, potentially stay in these hell realms for an eternity, but that would be their choice, not God's choice, sending someone to a fiery pit. So uh, much different on that respect. But um, the Arantia book, all things being said, the Arantia book, and uh, spiritualism both teach these levels of heaven, mansion worlds where we all go when we pass from this world and we learn and unlearn and make our way uh, to the presence of God. Uh, they don't necessarily believe in reincarnation. Uh, more spiritualists believe in reincarnation now because over time here in the West, we've been 
kind of inundated with Eastern philosophy and uh, New Age religion that kind of uh, is an amalgamation of all the religions of the world. And a lot of New Age uh, practitioners talk about reincarnation. So naturally, uh, you know, a lot of spiritualists have, uh, you know, uh, adopted that thought, but it's not necessarily a tenant uh, of spiritualism to be reincarnated. So the next thing that uh, spiritualism has in common with the Arantia book or vice versa is the idea that Jesus is the creator and Lord of our local universe. The Arantia book teaches that there are uh, many different sons of God who created universes and they are sovereign over the universes they have created. And, you know, Jesus is, you know, our Lord, our creator. He is the one who created this local universe and created us. And uh, there are some in spiritualism who believe in that same tenant for uh, many years now, even going as far back as uh, the 1800s that, you know, Jesus is a high spirit, a son of God, and he created this local universe, and he is the sovereign of it, but not necessarily the entire universe. Uh, Spiritism really believes in uh, this particular uh, tenant as well. But there are also spiritualists who are a little more... uh, traditional in their Christian spiritualist belief and uh, say that it was Christ who uh, created the entire universe, not just our local universe. I have to the camera a little bit one more time. Bear with me. Okay. Um. So as we can see, there there are definitely things that the Arantia book has in common with spiritualism. It's not so far off the beaten path. In fact, there are those who, uh, you know, who feel, you know, these are people that uh, uh, either don't read the Arantia book or they've read it and they, they just didn't like it or agree with anything in it. And they said, well, we feel that William Sadler wrote this for whatever reason. And uh, he borrowed all these different ideas from other people and other religions. And he definitely, absolutely borrowed heavily from spiritism and spiritualism because they were very, um, very little known or practiced religions back when the Arantia book came into being. So, you know, he tried to hoodwink people by uh, bringing all these, uh, thoughts uh, that many people were unfamiliar with into the Arantia book. Now, I don't believe that, but there are are some people that that certainly do, because the two of them are very, very similar in so many ways, including the idea of um, living the will of God in our lives, choosing to follow the will of God in our lives by being good to our fellow man, being of service to our fellow man, living by the golden rule, believing God, having faith, uh, doing harm to no one, uh, trying to improve our society. All these things in the Arantia book are said to, you know, help us lead us into the age of light and life, where our planet will be free from the effects of the Lucifer rebellion, and we will take our rightful place, uh, you know, in the universe and no longer be a a planet that is isolated from everyone else in the universe. And uh, the spiritualists believe in the same thing, that this is a planet of atonement. You know, we are here, we, we face these lessons and hard times, and, you know, we have to encounter evil. And it's all uh, that we might be tested. Earth is like a school. You know, we go through these tests and trials and we learn. 
and the spirit of God, our guardian angels, is, is always uh, cheering us on, if you will, or giving us uh, advice and help and intuitions and trying to guide us. And it's up to us to, to follow the will of God and follow that advice. Or we can follow our own free will and just, you know, be bitter, angry, uh, whatever it is we want to do, uh, and not uh, pass any of the tests here on uh, school earth. But eventually in spiritualism, as mankind uh, follows the will of God, uh, changes the way he lives, changes certain things about the structure of his society and religion, we will eventually enter uh, a time of peace where Christ will reign and planet earth will uh, have its rightful and better place in the spiritual universe. Now, there may be some people, traditional Christians, who hear that and say, oh my gosh, this is blasphemy, this is heresy. Uh, but actually, no, there were many in the early Christian communities who believed, uh, as the Bible says, you know, that, uh, you know, he, he is uh, seated in heaven until his enemies are made his footstool. And it is we, the followers of Christ, the children of God, who subdue those enemies by reforming society, religion, the way we treat one another, the way we act uh, personally as human beings and children of God. And as we do these things, we prepare the way for the return of Christ. So this is not something that's unheard of in Christianity. And those who look at spiritualism and the Arantia book and say, oh, these things are, are, are far, far off. This is heresy. Uh, not so fast, because a lot of early Christians uh, believe something very similar. And that's why you see uh, some denominations, even here in the West, in Christianity, who believe they have to do certain things upon the earth, subdue the earth. Uh, some of them have a very backwards and political way of thinking about how they want to do this. But nonetheless, they, they have the notion they have to pave the way for Christ to return and for planet Earth to get out of this uh, uh, kind of messy uh, situation that it's currently in. So again, this is something that spiritualism and the Arantia book have in common. One last thing that uh, spiritualism and uh, the Arantia book have in common is your personal relationship with God. You know, both stress that your personal relationship, your personal experiences with God is true religion. It is not found in a creed. It is not found in a building. It is not given to you by a pope, a priest, a pastor, or another person. You experience and experience God and know that God is by believing in him, opening your heart in faith, doing his will, and then experiencing him on, you know, whatever level, level you're going to experience him to know in your heart he is real, he is there, he is taking care of you, he is guiding you, and this is all most important, and both are highly upheld in the Arantia book and in spiritualism. So I hope we can see, and this is by no means an exhaustive uh, conversation about the things that the Arantia book and spiritualism have in common, uh, but I hope we can see that they do have more in common than we would um, first imagine. And uh, it's, it's also notable, you know, to just make... Uh, an end thought here that the Arantia book and the Bible do caution us against mediums and, you know, contacting spirits and all of this type of thing. And there are reasons for that. As I've stated many times in podcasts in the past, 
uh, mediums of the past, like when the Old Testament was written, were not the mediums of today. These, these people were into like black arts. They did very detestable things, uh, having intercourse with dead bodies, eating the flesh of the dead, uh, you know, sacrificing humans. They, they did very uh, dark and detestable things in order to conjure the spirit world. And so when we see in the Bible, you know, uh, sorcerer, necromancer, witchcraft, these are the kinds of things it's talking about, not what uh, the spiritualist medium uh, would be doing today to bring a person uh, a message of comfort and hope. But yet we have to be cautious, as the Arantia book and uh, the Bible would tell us to be, because we're not supposed to be dependent on mediums and spirits for every need in our lives. We are here on planet Earth to learn. We are here to grow. We are here to do God's will. We are here to advance and become pure spirits. So when we leave this Earth, we are making our way toward the presence of God and not going to these lower spiritual realms. And so we, we have to learn the lessons. We, we have to do the work. We can't go to fortune tellers and spiritualists and mediums every time we have a problem. And I see this a lot uh, in the work that I do and uh, being a part of uh, the local spiritualist community and even the, the local, you know, the spiritualist community online. I see a lot of people who run to psychics and mediums and readers over and over and over again. They, they can't make a move without consulting a medium or a spiritualist or, you know, whomever. And this is wrong. You know, we all have guidance. We all have our guardian angel. We all have the spirit of God within us or what the Arantia book would call the thought adjuster. You know, we all have the spirit of truth. We all have, you know, so many uh, spiritual supporters that are there to guide us and help us and give us flashes of intuition and wisdom and guidance. And we're here to listen and to cultivate that, not to run to mediums for everything that we need. And this is part of the big problem. So when you build on top of that, all the people who are frauds, who are greedy, who are just doing these spirit readings for profit and money, uh, and those who get into some really ridiculous things, which I see as well, uh, which are giving people misinformation and readings uh, that are coming more from the ego or a person's personal belief system rather than uh, pure spirits, it can be uh, a very touchy subject. And so I'm not saying that we shouldn't connect with the spirit world, but we should be careful. And we should take the advice of the Arantia book and the Bible and not be running to mediums for every little decision we need to make in our lives. That causes us to be spiritually weak. It causes us to uh, kind of wither in our own inner wisdom and intuition. And it also weakens our connection uh, with those spirits, guardian angels, spirit of truth, thought adjuster. It weakens our own connection with those guiding spiritual forces in our lives and makes us unable to hear them. And so, you know, we need to uh, really set some of this aside and uh, listen to that guidance of God in our own lives, not running to mediums and fortune tellers with every little issue that we have in life or every little decision we need to make in our lives. So folks, that's the show for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you see that, uh, you know, spiritualism and the Arantia book are not so uh, far off apart in some of the things that they teach and believe, and even how the Arantia book came into being. And I hope that if you are someone who uh, is into spiritualism and goes to mediums and readers, that uh, maybe 
uh, you'll think about, do you really need to go? Or can you enter into prayer and receive that guidance within yourself? So thank you everyone for listening. I appreciate it. I hope you got something out of this show this week. I'll see you next time here on the spirit side. Until then, God bless, stay in love, and stay in the light.